Hello everybody, I am Tom and you are watching me play Vampire. Today, a couple of things I want to do. One, I want to do the side quest that has to do with this letter that my father apparently gave me. Uh, and secondly, I want to go through and... Uh, here. Um, heal all the people in these other sectors. I think I'm going to do that first. So I'm just going to cut to each person, I'm not going to bother showing you, like, the whole thing. Um, in fact I may just cut when I'm done and I'll show you the result of that. Anyway, be back in a sec. Mr. Bates. Evening, Doctor. Since I took an oath to help people, can I be of assistance? Well, seen better days, that's for sure. But it was bound to happen with all these refugees about. Infecting you is probably the last thing on these people's minds. Take this in any case. What? You give me this for free? Don't have a clue about this place, do you? How are conditions in Whitechapel at present? The way this sickness is spreading, I don't think there'll be enough new bloods to replace those tenants I'm losing from this bloody thing. Goodbye, Mr. Bates. All right, we're back. Good evening, sir. It's me again. Leave me alone, I say, whoever you are. I can force him to let me in now, good. It cannot be safe for a blind man to live here alone. Let me enter, sir. I swear, I mean you no harm. Well, a voice never lies, and yours clearly is the voice of a gentleman. All right, Doctor, come on in. What kind of gentleman pays visits to people at this late hour? Hmm. He makes a fair point. He's blind. I also need to find someone who can read Braille, apparently. Vampires feed on your, our soul, new collectible. Um... Oh, it's Crossley's thing. Cool. Well, that's another one of Crossley's. I just did right click. I just did right click to try and use my Witcher senses. Which, by the way, I don't have. It's locked. I need vampire senses, not Witcher senses. Um... Ooh. Loretta's lever. Letter. I think I'm about to sneeze, so apologies if it goes silent for a second. Okay, and we're back. Sorry about that. Also, massive apology if I forget to cut it out when I'm editing. Um, <laughs> my dear brother, this is an apology letter you'll never read, for you've lost your sight because of me. I know you hate me for what I did, even if you never say so. You don't talk much in your Swansbury family, do you? Uh, we don't talk much in the Swansbury fa family, do we? So, to clear my conscience, this is my bravest gesture toward you, to write you this letter and to leave it in your laboratory. If you ever find it and ask about it, I'll read it to you. If someone else reads it, well, as I wrote above, this is my bravest gesture. So, Mason, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what I did and for the hell you've been through. You've been thrown into. I'm sorry you're now blind man trying to find meaning in this useless life. If I could change one thing, only one thing in my miserable life, it would uh, be what happened one year ago. I swear it, Mason, if I could give my eyes to you to see again, I would. But it does not work that way, does it? So please, my brother, forgive me, Loretta. Interesting. She still blames herself for his accident. I don't actually know what his accident is. I'll talk to him and find out, I suppose. So what is the name of my nocturnal visitor? I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. As I already explained to you, I'm inquiring about the epidemic. Dr. Reed? The eminent surgeon? My god, I'd never have expected a brilliant physician like you to knock on my door. You flatter me, sir. No, sir, I am flattered. I read all your work when I still had my sight. I loved it. I'm Mason Swanborough, by the way. Interesting. Do you know Braille? Do you know Braille, Mr. Swanborough? I'm no expert, but I learned it in my spare time, yes. Why? I found a strange document entitled Cure for Blindness. It's written in Braille, so I thought perhaps it was yours. Really? Is that some kind of sick joke? Let me see. Here it is. This letter seems authentic. And actually refers to an experimental cure for blindness. You have piqued my interest, Dr. Reed. Could it be of any use to you? No. This page is just a part of a larger diary. Hmm. I'd be glad if you could find the other pages. Cool. Um... 
I bet Whitechapel. How is the sanitary situation evolving in Whitechapel these days? I hear them hissing and scratching at my door every night. The sick made mad by the fever. But these mm. walls are thick, and my lock is solid. Well, that's something at least. Um, let's cure you. You have neuralgia. You seem unwell, sir. Do you need my assistance? Actually, I feel worse than usual. Can you give me something? Sure. Yes. I can give you a little something that has been proven effective. Thank you, Doctor. Cool. Um, life in London. Does someone take care of you in this isolated place? My sister Loretta and I have our daily routine. Every morning and evening she comes by so we can talk and eat. Then she leaves and I stay. Hmm. Do you not appreciate your sister's visits? Loretta is the best and worst thing that happened to me. And I believe she could say the same thing about me. Where does your sister go? Well, let's just say... She earns enough money for us both. What's so amusing about that? I won't hide the truth from you. Loretta sells a fake miracle elixir to the sick people of Whitechapel. Yep, I knew that. <laughs> Already figured that out. And what else have you learned about me, Mr. Swanborough? I know you assisted Professor Carell in France, and that you invented a new blood transfusion method based on his work. Yes. Those were frustrating but exciting days. I loved it. Yes, the thrill of research and discovery. This is what drives people like us, Dr. Reed. Oh, how I envy you. Mm. Why does your sister feel so guilty about what happened to you? Because she knows I'll never forgive what she did to me. You run an illegal business with someone you hate? I don't hate my sister. She looks after me, we have a good time. But I'm just not ready to forgive her. Hmm. Interesting. I kind of want to go talk to his, his uh, Goodbye, sister. Mr. Swanborough. I'll leave you now. Um, hopefully Tell I can... Me. How do you see the world these days? Seems pretty shit in my eyes. Um... It's interesting. Uh, there's a dude down here, but I'm gonna try and run away. Hello! <laughs> this worked out better than anticipated. Look at that, I got away. Um, I'm gonna go talk to his sister. I actually thought they were husband and wife, but apparently they're siblings. Um... Yeah, it's weird that. I mean, if she did rightly cause his accident, then I can see why he would still be annoyed. And she s clearly thinks she did, but I still don't really know how he became blind. Nor do I know... Am I going the right way? I think I'm going the right way. Uh, nor do I know how she possibly could have caused that. She's up here, I think. Hello! Good evening, my dear colleague. Um, let's first I'd like trade. To see what kind of medicine you're selling. Because I could end up pissing her off. Um, I got a mine. I think I need. Probably need opium as well. Um, I only have like two hundred. I'm gonna like five of these. Think I need codeine. Oh, well, she actually sells proper medicine, which My doesn't make a lot of sense that she's selling fake shit. Um, How current is situation? the sanitary situation evolving in Whitechapel these days? When people buy guns instead of medication, it means they have already traded hope for fear in their hearts. In my book, that's never a good thing, Doctor. Hmm. Interesting perspective. Loretta. Why do you feel so guilty about your brother? I don't expect him to forgive me. All I can do is make amends for what I did. By making him a crook and a criminal? What if somebody decides to make him pay for your scam? Mason is totally capable of defending himself. Just leave us be. 
We're perfectly fine. I mean, I don't believe that. Hmm. You're fools. Do you not see that failure is the only possible outcome for your project? On the contrary, Dr. Reed, the Swamper Accordial will become a huge success. If the epidemic keeps spreading. Hmm. Interesting that I failed that hint. All right. Goodbye, Miss Swanbra. Perhaps we'll talk again. When science fails you, this elixir. Go get the elixir. Okay. Uh, in that case, I'm going to cut to the other people I need to heal, which I believe is in. Um, there's one there. Mainly the docks. All right. I'll cut again. All right, we're back again with uh, Mortimer. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. Do you need any help? I'm afraid I may, sir. I don't mean to be a burden. Here you go. You are not a burden, sir. Healing you is my responsibility. And Indeed. you have my gratitude for that. Mm, nothing new, it seems. What well, about your condition? Your medical report says you're not affected by the Spanish flu. What do you think of that, Mortimer? Does it make me happy? Not in the slightest. If it was up to me, I would have left this place long ago. I know I don't belong here. And why do you think you don't belong here? I know the staff have more important things to do than look after me. There's plenty of patients here who need their attention. Hmm. How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. I'll let you get some rest then. Good evening, sir. Don't tell me. Good evening, Doctor. How is my son doing? I've read your son's medical report, Beatrice. It's not the flu or anything life-threatening. What has you so worried? He was at death's door when he was brought here. I just want him to be better as soon as possible. He's not out of the woods yet, you know. He might need to stay here longer than expected. Take care of him then, Dr. Reed. People here only seem to focus on contagious patients. I worry my poor Mortimer will be neglected. Probably a fair worry, to be honest. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. Interesting. I keep, like, expecting there to be something here, and I never really find anything. It's possible that I just haven't found what I need to find to be able to talk to them. But anyway, we're going to cut, and we will be back in the docks. Alright, and we're back at the docks. I can't remember who's sick. Edwina Cox is sick. Ichabod Thornton. Lottie. Martin Nightingale. Oh, right, I don't know who he is. And Stella Fishbone. Fair enough. Edwinny Cox first. Good evening, Miss Cox. Hello again, Dr. Reed. What do you want? Um, let's see. Any news about the shelter? Have you got any news about Sean Hampton's shelter? As long as he keeps on helping the poor, I'll keep my boys at bay. Even if he pisses them off. Huh. Good woman. Can I see what you have to sell? As long as you have money, I'll show you all I have. Uh, I think I need these. Although they're too expensive for what I have now. Do I have junk? I do have some junk. Mm, I'll keep that. Sweet, I could probably afford it now. 
I most definitely can. Not what Good I wanted evening, to do. Cox. Hello again, Dr. Reed. What do you want? I want to trade can and I, I want to buy a couple of good handle parts. So my melee weapon is fully upgraded. Um, what isn't fully upgraded, however, is my one-handed weapon. So I want to fully upgrade my one-handed weapon just in case I want to have switch for any reason. Good evening, Miss Cox. Hello again, Dr. Reed. Hello again. What do you want? Can I offer you my medical help, Miss Cox? Giving out for free. You'd make a poor businessman, Dr. Reed. Good doctor, though. Perhaps I would. Please, take this. You will feel better. Thank you. But don't expect me to owe you anything. <laughs> There's little... How would you put it? You get these flashes of, like, a really nice woman behind the ruthlessness. I feel like the she's probably a kind woman if circumstances were different. Tell me your feelings about Booth's belief in monsters, Edwina. It makes him look weak in front of the boys. That's my feeling about it. But ghosts don't scare me. You don't believe he really saw something then? I don't care what he saw or not. All I know is that a real man keeps his fears to himself if he wants to be obeyed. Interesting. Um... And we does not trust Booth Digby's leadership since he is superstitious. Interesting. Do you think there's anything to say here now? Nah, not really. You worried about London's situation? Are you worried about the sanitary situation in London? The bodies are piling up, but I'm not afraid. I'm still alive and I intend to stay that way. Fair enough. Goodbye, Miss Cox. Cool. Alright, so the Wiener Cox is done. Now I need to find everyone else. I think they're all in the other direction, really. These guys are all fine, quote unquote. We need to find. You're near the. the whatchamacallit. Lottie Paxton is near the other thing. Martin Nightingale is near the. Alright, so they're all near the, um... The Western Docks are all here. Good to know. I think I know how to get to all of them without much difficulty. Uh, I went the wrong way. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I think I know how to get to all of them without much difficulty. Whoops, I went the wrong way. Hmm. <laughs> It's always about right, isn't it? Actually, she might be over here. Yes, Fishbone is here. That's what I thought. I was thinking of the wrong old woman. There's two. Good evening, Mrs. Fishbone. May I come in, please? Of course, Dr. Reed. Good sleep. I've been nothing but worry. What can I do for you, Dr. Reed? Mrs. Fishburne, are you in need of any medical assistance? I am afraid I am, Doctor. I don't feel well at all. Hey, well. Then let me give you a prescription. I thank you for your generosity, sir. It's something this part of town truly needs. Indeed. Um, any news of his shelter? Do you have any news about Sean Hampton's shelter? I just heard the sad saint keeps on helping the sick and poor. God bless his soul. So saving him seemed to be the correct decision. Aren't you worried about the conditions around here? Hate everywhere. The city will not sink because of this flu. It's the violence that will finish us all. Hmm. Fair enough. Nothing new. And nothing new. Goodbye, Mr. Oh, that's right. Take care of yourself. Her Your son's a serial killer. <laughs> An unabashed serial killer. I forgot about that one. Um 
Let's see. So we've done her. Now we can head over th this way, I think is the fastest way. I'm going to go through here. Um, we can actually kind of just go like... Is there a way through here? I think there is. Up here. Yeah. Um, shillings, they're mine. We come out here. Hey, come and have a gander. He's sick. Um, is there a way down from here? Yes. Stairs. Cool. Hello. You're sick, Martin. Good evening, young man. There's no need to call me that, Dr. Reed. Trade. Show me what you have to offer then, Mr. Nightingale. Uh, nothing that I want. Good evening, young man. There's no need to call me that, Dr. Reed. How's the shelter going? Have you going? heard anything recently concerning Sean Hampton's shelter? He keeps investing time helping the poor and sick. Good for him. And for them. Are you feeling worried about the sanitary situation in London? This city is falling apart. The disease kills so many people. No one cares about anything or anyone anymore but themselves. Hmm. Nothing new. Nothing new. Take Young this kill. Do you require medical attention? I don't like asking for help. But I don't want to be one of those poor sods dying in the streets. Fair enough. There's no shame in asking for help, especially when you are in desperate need of it. Here, take this. You should recover in no time. Thank you. I suppose. Goodbye. Cool. And I believe... Eagleboard and Loxy Paxton. Paxton? Patton? One of those. Um, they should just be up here, I think. At the very least, they used to just be here. There's Giselle. There's Lottie. There's Sean. Don't know where Ichabod is. Glad to see you again, Mr. Reed. Oh, she's the nice one. Good. <laughs> Do you need my medical attention, Miss Paxton? I can keep going, Dr. Reed. Of course you can, Miss Paxton, but I wouldn't recommend it. Please, take this. You will feel better. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Thank you. Really. No problem. Do you have recent news of Sean Hampton's shelter? Oh. Are you worried no answer. about the sanitary situation in London? There are rumours of infected people turned mad by the fever and roaming the streets, attacking everyone they see. Is it true? As long as you stay away from the streets, you should be all right. I hope you're right, Dr. Reed. We feel kind of left alone around here. Hmm. I suppose they kind of are left alone around here. Goodbye, Miss Paxton. Um, I want to talk to Sean Hampton while I'm here, just because it's interesting. Um, I also want to find... What's his name, if I can? Although I don't know where he is. Ichabod, where are you? We're far out there, Ichabod. Hmm. I'll see if I can find him afterwards. I'm going to talk to Sean Hampton. Sean! Oh, what the hell? <laughs> they moved positions. Where'd he go? Am I crazy? He was just here, right? Oh, there he is. Weird. Hey, Sean. Welcome back to my humble shelter, Dr. Reed. Are you here to subdue me again? No, Sean. I just came by to see how you are. I feel all right. Why do you ask? Are you still feeding on corpses? No. It's almost as though the blood you forced me to drink has provided me eternal satisfaction. Huh. That's interesting. So it didn't de him. But he no longer has to eat? Interesting. 
How is the sanitary situation in this part of town? I think it's acceptable. Fewer cases of sickness recently. I thank the Lord for his mercy. How are things in your shelter? Between the mortals and the immortals, I mean. Even if we're all children of God, I've always maintained a strict frontier between the two communities. Fair enough. What do you fear? A few years ago, a skull decided to pay a nocturnal visit to my sleeping customers. He got caught licking their necks in the dark. Since then, I have added a lock to the door. Mm. What if food became scarce? Wouldn't the immortals in your flock be tempted to feed on the living? Wouldn't you? The skulls can feed on the dead, Doctor. And until Judgment Day, mortals will continue dying. <laughs> he makes a fair point. It's not like something you're gonna run out of, really. Um, did we get everything here? We did. Uh, old Bridget. How did you meet old Bridget? When younger, I used to patrol the streets at night, searching for lost souls. This is how I met her. It took me two months just to get her name. Now we support each other. Hmm. Have you visited the hideout? Had you already visited the hideout in the sewers? Just once, and very briefly. Most of them are very discreet, and they see me as an outsider, even if I protect them. Fair. You really are a saint, Sean. Oh, no, sir, I'm not. But I know evil, and I believe goodwill and tenacity can make this world a better place. No, you're a saint. In the truest sense of the word. Osculate? Osculate. Have you seen Harriet Jones? I don't know what that word means. Her to old Bridget. No. She is with the sewer scales now. I don't go downstairs. Osculate. What happened at the Pembroke? What happened at the Pembroke? I guess we recognized each other. As scales, I mean. She had but one thought. To punish. To get revenge upon everything and everyone. I realized I had to bring her here quickly. But why did she fake her own death? There was so much blood in her room. She attacked patients, too. I just lost her for a minute that night. When I found her, she had caused mayhem across the hospital. I slapped some sense into her, and we fled before getting caught. What happened then? We ran here through narrow streets and backyards. She kept saying that someone was talking to her in the dark, offering to avenge her. But I saw nobody. Hmm. Would you let me listen to your chest? That's what it means. No, I looked it up on my phone as we were you going. You already forced me to drink your blood, and I thank you for that, for I feel better now. But it was quite an unpleasant experience. It would help me greatly if you would allow me to give you a physical examination. I said no. I'm no subject of medical examination, and I intend only to obey and to kneel before God. Fair enough. Uh, by the way, Osculate. Examine a patient by listening to sounds from the heart, lungs, or other organs, typically using a stethoscope. <laughs> Makes sense. Alright. Farewell, Sean. Take good care of your flock. And of yourself. Indeed. Alright, now, so now I need to find... Handwritten prayer. Dear Lord, this is my prayer for my beloved mother, Gertrude Paxton, who now awaits her, daughter, her daughters in heaven. Until that day, I thank you for allowing me to wake up and go through each new day in honest poverty and modesty. Please protect the good Mr. Hampton, who let us sleep at his night shelter. I humbly ask you forgive me for the resentment I feel towards my sister, Giselle, since mother died. Blessed be her soul. Thank you, God, for hearing me. Interesting. Um, Lord and your sister Giselle Paxton are poor and homeless since their mother died. I kind of already knew that, and that'll be the same, I assume. I'm intrigued to see whether I get anything Glad new from that. See you again, Mr. Reed. No, I guess it'll be personal questions, that makes sense. Lottie, tell me about the death of your mother. Giselle killed her, plain and simple. She killed her with her daily whims. Her laziness and her complaints. That's quite a statement. You can't kill someone because you're fickle. Mother was very ill. But I forgave Giselle. 
What I couldn't stand was how she cried at her funeral like she was the one left alone. Hmm. Perhaps your sister is not as tough as you are. I know that, and I don't blame her. It just makes me sad that my own sister is the person I understand the least. Hmm. Giselle is the only family you have left. Don't you think it's time you forgave her? Sometimes words are harder to forgive than acts, Dr. Reed. Interesting perspective. Also probably true a lot of the time. Goodbye, Miss Paxton. I guess I'll go talk to the bitchy Miss Paxton as well. Because I now have a new thing for her. Oh. They have a habit of leaving where I thought they were. It's kind of annoying. There she is. You again? What do you want? Do you have recent news of Sean Hampton shelter? The place is alright, I suppose. The sad saint is still the same. Except for that awful skin disease he recently got. Hmm. Are you worried about the sanitary situation in London? Chaos is rising, Dr. Reed. This city is about to crumble. You almost sound happy. This world needs to die, Dr. Reed. And from the ashes, a new one will emerge with more mm. equity and freedom. Equity isn't freedom. Equality is. Um, your life in London... Hmm, tell me about Sean Hampton. Giselle, I know you sleep at Sean Hampton's shelter. What can you tell me about him? He provided a roof for me and my sister. I am grateful, of course. But he gives me the creeps. Why is that? He's always sad. Like he's about to cry. He's always asking us to get closer to God. To give ourselves to the Lord. Hmm. <laughs> Creepy. Yeah, that's fair enough. Heavily religious people do sometimes have that kind of effect. Particularly if it's on someone who's... Not even necessarily not religious. But just against someone who's not as religious. It comes across as... Well, I mean, the obvious word would be preachy, but it's more than that. It's like... When people talk like they have a close personal connection to God, it's always kind of... Creep me out isn't the correct word. Creepy's not correct, it's just... odd. Giselle, tell me about the death of your mother. After our father died, mother worked so hard she made herself sick. We spent all the money we had on useless drugs and doctors. It was hell. Hell? What do you mean? The three of us were exhausted and desperate. And when I'm desperate, I tend to get angry. And I'm hard to live with. Lottie said I killed Mother. You should talk to your sister. Whatever happened when your mother died, the truth lies somewhere between your two versions. I don't want to talk about that. It was years ago. We Paxton sisters are tough. We don't apologize. Hmm. Well, I'll leave you for now. Goodbye, Miss Paxton. Alright, so I still need to find... What's his name? Um, I think I'll cut, and then we'll be back when I find him. Well, I found him. He's apparently training. Good evening, Mr. Throckmorton. Dr. Reed, can I be of any assistance? Have you noticed anything suspicious lately? Have you heard any rumors regarding Sean Hampton's shelter? The sad saint will always be a target for vampires, but I'm keeping an eye out. Are you worried about Ironic. the sanitary situation in London? It seems the guard of Prewin has declared war on vampires. I'm not sure if that's a good thing, though. Really? I thought you'd be thrilled by this news. The Guard can be reckless. They rush into a fight without thinking. The citizens of London should not be the collateral victims. Hmm. Interesting. Do you need my medical attention, sir? <laughs> Actually, I may. In my line of work, I have to stop at any sign of infection. Treating a vampire hunter's wounds is certainly a first for me. 
I'm happy to help you, of course. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Your support means a lot. Alright. So that's everyone cured, I believe. Good hunting, Mr. Throckmorton. So I think I've now cured everyone. Um, so I'm going to actually go and rest, probably. I want to rest back at West End, which I can actually get to fairly easily from here. I found an old letter. Reed Mansion, 8th of March, 1908. Dear, my dear Avery, as I already told you several days ago, I may be forced to leave England, if only for a few months, while I'm away and until my son comes back to London. I want you to take the best care of the house. I already made the entire necessary arrangements to have your wages increased and paid as long as you'll work. You promised me you'd protect my dear wife and serve me her to the best of your ability. For that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. If I am never to return, you are the only man I fully trust. Believe me and your affectionate friend, Aubrey Reed. Hmm. Interesting. We already kind of knew that, um, just from the fact that, uh, what was, I was back left, yeah. We already kind of knew that because, um, the butler told us that. Like, he told us that he's paid out until he left, but I guess we could learn there anyway. Um, I actually want to sleep because I want to see how the situation turns with all of this. Um, I don't think there's anything I necessarily want to upgrade. How much does that cost? Three thousand. Um. How much does this cost? Six hundred. I can spare six hundred for more health. I think that's probably fine. I'll leave about fourteen hundred there. Confirm. Nobody got sick there. Hmm. Seems this place is always going to be serious. <laughs> Fair enough. There always seems to be about the same amount of people being sick. So I think what's probably better is that I'll continue with the story and before I level up next I'll make sure everyone's cured but it seems to be like a, a perpetual thing at this point in any case uh, that's gonna be it for this episode if you like the video please leave a like rather slow episode today just running around curing people and talking to people but nevertheless if you like the video please leave a like if you're not subscribed already please consider subscribing and as always thanks for watching and I shall see you next time bye guys